Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm really, really excited about today's video. And today's video is gonna be about um, a, a type of jig that really has changed the fishing in, in my boat. And it, what I'm talking about is, is just a simple jig design. And so a lot of us use a lot of plastics in crappie fishing and, the, uh, and they're fantastic. You know, I, I've got a wonderful uh, plastic sponsor uh, with the uh, B&M Crappie Baits here in uh, St. Mary's, Ohio, here on Grand Lake St. Mary's. And just a tremendous piece of plastic. And I'll, I'll show you, this is a new twister tail that, uh, um, that Bruce has, has been pouring. And what's really cool is, as you can see, I want to show you try to get a camera angle. You see that there's a little boot on the end, a little boot paddle tail. And what happens is when you're, that's, this is coming through the water, then not only is the twister tails uh, spinning or twisting, the little boot tail is causing vibration as well. And then what I noticed is, is when I had this rigged on a hook and I ran up in real shallow water where I could see it, um, is that not only is the twister tail twisting, but just as in a swim bait for bass fishing, when that swim bait's coming through the water, that swim bait's rocking. Just like that, there's a little bit of a rock to this when it's coming through the water. So guys, I mean, the, the colors are endless and, and Bruce just making a tremendous uh, tail here. And of course he offers all other kinds of plastic tails and, and, and such, but this, Twister tail is something that I use quite a bit, and especially in the fall when we're talking about shooting docks, shooting pontoons, and then also long lining uh, out the back of the boat uh, on lakes that uh, long lining uh, applies, and, and and so we use a lot of, a lot of these. So just in, as I've talked in previous videos, when do you use plastics and when do you use tide jigs? And I've said before that I'll start with plastics because I can have several different colors. I can change them in and out really quick. And then once I find that certain color, and then if I'm really starting to stack them up, I'll switch to a tide jig, especially for a tournament situation. When I switch to that tide jig, I then become more efficient because my plastic's not sliding off. It's not tearing up. It's not anything. That tide jig is I can make repeated cast and and catch several fish and, and be very, very efficient. So both in my boat, they, they both have places for uh, the, the plastics and the tide jigs. So what was really cool is that, I mean, I, I have these rigged up all the time. Uh, and again, B&M crappie baits out of St. Grand Lake St. Mary's. Um, we, we have these in several different colors. Um, just, I mean, they're, they're effective anywhere we go in the country. But if I get a situation that I'm on a um, on a pontoon or a dock and and I'm catching them every cast, and now I do use hooks that have keepers on them to help keep the plastic in place, but after a while, if you caught 10 or 12, 15 fish off of a boat or a dock, your bait's going to be tore up even with the keeper. So, went to my tie jig folks, and you know I'm sponsored by some of the best hand tied jig tires in, in, I think in the country. And, and so with Reed's crappie jigs, Reed, uh, to start tying me a hand tied twister tail. And so on that hand tied twister tail, hopefully you can see in the camera good. You can see, I, now this is a, a 16th ounce twister tail and they got, a, they got the fish head design on it. And it's really cool. This is his, what we call the milk jug color. So here is a hand tied twister tail. And now I can make several, several, several casts. As a matter of fact, I, I have fished multiple events with, with just one jig, as long as I don't uh, damage the hook point. Uh, but th this hand tied twister tail gets me a lot more casts, a lot more efficiency. I don't have to you know, say you catch one, the bait messes up. So you got to take the time to take the fish off, 
we weigh every fish and, and, and have call tags on them. So we got to do that. Get the fish in the live well. Now I'm our baits messed up. Get another bait out. Get that rigged up. And and I'm very meticulous on how I rig my plastics. And they got to be straight and they got to be right. And so, you know, it takes a little bit of time to get that all re-rigged. With a hand-tied twister tail, pop the jig out, put the crappie away, you're back up and you're back fishing. If you're fishing a team format like we do, a lot of times my team per tournament partner, uh, Dan Reed, he does all of our fish care. He takes care of, uh, you know, weighing, measuring, uh, tagging, and 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 also throughout the day making sure the fish are healthy and and uh, all the pumps are running and putting a little little extra juice in the uh, uh, in the live well. So then I can get back to making those casts. So if we're doing that, we're in a team situation. Boom, fish is in the live well. I'm already back casting. And there's been times Dan's putting fish in the live well or putting that fish in the live well. And by the time he does all that in that turnaround, weighing, measuring, and tagging, I might have two or three more fish flopping on the bottom of the boat by his feet. Just because I was able to get back in underneath the pontoon or the dock or the boat lift, whatever we're fishing. And, and being able to do that with a hand-tied twister tail because it's very, very efficient. So that shows you this the the sixteenth ounce, and I mean, just a beautiful bait. And then we also, uh, of course, have the one thirty second ounce that we use primarily on our home lakes, and 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 just a like I said, just a gorgeous bait. And these these twister tails have a really nice twist in the water, uh, very nice tight twist, and and it, and and it's just, and again, it's a well built bait, and you don't have to fix it, and so. I'm making multiple casts. I might have two, three, four fish at, at at Dan's feet in the bottom of the boat. And it's no fault of his. He was just putting the fish in. He's taking care of the fish. But the efficiency of me being able to get the bait back up underneath or underneath the dock boat, whatever it is, uh, we, I even, you know, if there's an overhanging tree uh, oh, just above the water and there's a little gap like this, and there's a log or something, I'll shoot up underneath that gap and run right by that log, just like I would a spinnerbait bass fishing. And they will come out and, and, and absolutely inhale that and eat that, eat that twister tail. So, you know, again, I've, I've done videos with talking about when to use plastics, when to use tide jigs. Um, and, and this is just a scenario. And again, I have started tournaments with plastics because maybe I don't have a hand tied jig in a particular color. You know, uh, Bruce at uh, B&M Crappie Baits all the time is coming up with different colors. And we'll get, you know, little samples and such, and we'll go out and oh, oh, having a good tournament on those on those twister tails. Well, I may not have that same color and a hand tied. By the next tournament, I will, because at Reed's Crappie Jigs, you get your order in with Reed's, and he's going to have your order turned around in just a very short time. I've seen him take orders one day and have the and have, have the order ready to go the very next day. Uh, so, uh, you know, he's very quick on his turnaround and the efficiency is is, is, is there. So, uh, so I just wanna encourage you guys. And again, I've even got them in, I've got these tied up even in um, uh, a quarter ounce because there's times like you're gonna be fishing some, some deeper docks, some deeper areas uh, where you're gonna, you know, you're live scoping a brush pile. Let's say you're live scoping a brush pile in 20 foot of water. You really don't want to wait for that bait, if it's a 30 second ounce jig, to get all the way down, especially if those croppers are just right above the structure, the hump, the brush pile, and it's in 20 foot of water, especially if you're fishing Dale Hollow. Fishing Dale Hollow and you're fishing 30, 40 foot deep. We can get these a quarter ounce in, in, in bait, and, I, and you're just, I'm telling you, with the efficiency of being able to, you know, let's say on live scope, you're getting that bait and that fish was almost going to commit and he, then he turns. We can reel up real quick and make another cast. Sometimes you reel up real quick, your plastic slid down the hook or, you know, you got to fix something with the bait. With a hand tie jig, you're right back in the action. So guys, Reed's crappie jigs, B&M crappie plastics, use both. Like I said, I start with, with the plastics. You can start with the tie jigs. You don't have to start with plastics, but I just like the, the ability that I don't have to have 10 rods on the deck. 
I can have a plastic uh, rigged up on a spinning rod and I can have a tie jig rigged up. And then if I start going through the plastics and I get the colors and I'm changing the colors and I find a color and I happen to have that same color in a tie jig, well then boom, you know, I'm, I'm gonna get out, you know, hey, maybe they're eating that color. And so I'm gonna get that going and I'm gonna drop that on their head. And, you know, and the cool thing with, uh, with B&M crappie baits and Reed's crappie jigs is that you can have anything, any color, anything you can imagine. If you wanted a, a quarter ounce with a number one round bend hook, or you wanted a, the, uh, uh, you know, Eagle Claw has the little nasty or something, you want that in a four or a six or whatever, whatever is your pleasure, Reed's crappie jigs and also B&M crappie baits can make that happen. So, uh, you know, when also when I'm long lining, there was a, a question on social media one day and it was in a long lining group and it said, Hey guys, what are you using for long lining? Man, I jumped all over that. I'm using hand ties and I'm using the plastics as well, but the hand ties, uh, twister tails, again, once you have that color dialed in, you're going to be able to make the cast out there. You're long lining, you bring a fish in, you skipping across the top of the water, you're bringing the back of the boat, pop the hook out, get the get the fish in the live well, and you can make that cast. You don't have to worry about fixing the bait. You don't have to worry about adjusting the bait. You don't have to worry about any of that. And again, when I'm long lining, I'm going to start with plastics. Um, if I got a team partner and we're out together, maybe he starts with plastics and I start with tie jigs. And we start with four or five, you know, it all depends what state you're in. You can start with three or four different colors and then see what, what's going to work for you. And so I encourage you that if you do call B&M uh, crappie baits or and if you call Reed's crappie jigs and you're wanting twister tails, what have you, make sure you get you a, a nice variety of colors that is going to work and be efficient for you because you might fish lakes like, well, our lakes around here, you see your jigs down two, three inches, that's a really clear day. Um, and then there's, there's some lakes we fish you can see down two, three foot. So make sure you have a wide variety. You know, if you call Chris Reed, make sure you're getting, you know, some milk jug colors and, and uh, you know, of course, the chartreuses and the blacks and the whites and all that type of deal. And with B&M uh, plastics, you know, make sure you, you're, I, one of our favorites is blue and chartreuse, black and chartreuse, all chartreuse. Uh, then he has a, uh, like a pearl with black flake in it that works really, really well. And, and so, but if you guys, you know, if you have any questions whatsoever, don't hesitate dropping down in the comment box and, and just ask the questions. And, and if you need hookups or connections with either of uh, these two sponsors of mine with B&M Crappie Baits and Reach Crappie Jigs, make sure to reach out to me and I'll get you connected up by, you know, if you're, if you're out of state and you want uh, phone numbers, I can get your phone numbers. Check out on my Facebook page um at uh, matt tuttle uh fishing or matt tuttle uh, I, I do a lot of advertising on all of those those channels and also reads crappie jigs and uh b and m uh crappie baits are on facebook as well uh but reach out to me and and ask questions about you know the different jig designs uh how how and where i fish those jigs uh how i rig them up what pound test line you know I, th this day in time if I'm shooting up underneath ponds, I don't know if I want to give this juice. This is juice. I don't know. Hmm. You know, I, I've been shooting pontoons and docks since, let's see. I think it goes back to 1990. Now, that, that shows my age a little bit. Um, I got a hat on, kind of showing up, hiding my gray hair. But one of the things that you want to take in consideration, you're shooting docks or you're shooting uh, pontoons, uh, is pound test line. So if I'm shooting a dock and I'm in Alabama, I'm, I'm going to want probably a rod rigged up with four pound line and I'm going to want a rod rigged up with six pound line. And what, what I'm, what I mean by that is the four pound line is going to get me a further cast up back up underneath the dock or the pontoon. Okay. And if you've ever fished Alabama, you know, those southern lakes, sometimes those boathouses are huge and you, you got to get way back, way back up underneath. And so you, doing like uh, using four pound line, four pound monofilament line or even four pound uh, fluorocarbon, but four pound monofilament will fly off the reel even faster than fluorocarbon will. 
fluorocarbon, just remember, fluorocarbon sinks. So it's gonna take a little longer for the monofilament to fall, but the fluorocarbon is gonna fall just a little bit faster. So just, just keep that in mind when you're trying to say, you know, when am I catching those crappies at eight, 10, 12 feet deep or six feet deep for it, whatever it is, when you're counting down. And, and, and that's what I do. So unless I'm fishing a dock, it's got 12, 15 foot of water on it, shoot that jig up underneath there and I'll do a countdown. And I'll say 1,000, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4. And it's going to get you in the ballpark about how deep you're going to be at. And then you start reeling. And and then uh, and, and I know when I'm shooting up a, a hand tied jig up underneath there, I know it's right. I know it's not fouled. I know it's not messed up or anything like that. And that's the peace of mind that I have as a tournament fisherman. That it's going to come through the water and it's going to be right. Uh, so, uh, you know, I use, uh, uh, of course, uh, six pound line when the water's murkier or what have you. And also if I'm not worried about getting that huge distance. So I want to use the heavier pound test line that I can get away with, but also fish efficiently. And there's been times where I fish pontoons and I, and I don't make me any difference. I don't care if the pontoons backwards, frontwards don't make no difference. I'm, I'll shoot that pontoon. You know, you got the little gap between by on each side of the motor uh, or you got if the pontoons parallel with a, a seawall or a bank, you know, you got the huge front opening and you can shoot up underneath there and such. Most primarily I'm fishing six pound line because you know, your line's going to rub up against the pontoons or you shoot up underneath docks, you rub up against the wooden post or the steel post or whatever. So just keep that in mind, four and six pound, make sure you have those rigged up in the boat or if you, you're fishing off the bank or what have you, uh, make sure you have those uh, with you. So the, there's just times that the, the fish are at, if you're at the back of the pontoon, they're clear at the front of the pontoon and it might be a light issue. You know, they may be, uh, it's darker towards the front of the pontoon than it is at the back of the pontoon. So you're like, man, they're, for whatever reason, they're way back up underneath there. So guys take some of that, that juice I just gave you about the pound test line, try that, see if that'll work for you. So you put the pound test line compare it, or uh, paired up with the hand tie jig and your efficiency should be much, much greater. Uh, guys, if you like what the content for today's uh, video, make sure you hit the like and the subscribe button. And, and, and there'll be also, I'm also uh, thinking about coming out with a new segment called the Tuttle Talks. And the Tuttle Talks, it was inspired to me by a very, very close friend of mine. And those Tuttle Talks, we can talk about anything. Anything's on the table. And so, hey, we'll see what happens. Well, we'll try one here real soon. And, uh, you know, if everybody likes it, we'll keep it going. And and if not, you know, we'll, we'll figure something else out. But, um, and also, guys, this is a time of year. We're in the fall. Make sure you check those docks. Make sure you're checking those pontoons. And where I'm from, the pontoons up here in the northern part of the country, uh, here in Ohio, uh, the pontoons are coming out of the water pretty quick. Uh, we're where our temperatures are dropping. But uh, wherever you're at in your part of the world, make sure you're checking out those docks and pontoons this time of year. The bait fish like getting up in there, especially if you got docks in the creeks or something like that, because we all know the bait fish move up in the creek areas of that deal. So uh, again, we here at Matt Tuttle Fishing, thank you so very much for watching and tuning in and we can't wait to see you again.